If it's been a while since you've been to Destiny 2, quite a bit has changed. And Destiny 2 is one of those games where you let it go for a little bit. Over the year, a lot more complicated systems have been included, but it's still a very fun game. In this video, I'm going to go over what has changed in Destiny 2 for those of you who are returning. And that can vary depending on when you left off. So I'm leaving timestamps in the video so you can pick the things you want to review based on the last time you played Destiny 2. First off, let's talk about materials in the game. So materials have changed quite a bit. The primary things you're gonna to wanna to worry about is Glimmer. If you played the game before, Glimmer is how you purchase things in the game, especially bounties, stuff like that. It's the primary core thing that's used in the game. You also have a Senate Alloy, and this is primarily used for the weapon crafting system that came out of Witch Queen. If you wanna get this, you primarily get this from doing Witch Queen activities, and there's sometimes some special quests that come along to give that to you as well. Ascended Shards. Ascended Shards are required for forging Masterwork gear. So again, those are primarily purchasable from the Cryptarch and also from doing challenging activities like Grandmaster Nightfalls, things like that. You also have Enhancement Cores. Enhancement Cores are what you use to purchase upgrade modules which allow you to power up your gear and also for forging Masterwork gear. These you can get from breaking down legendary gear from some activities and from bounties. You also have Enhancement Prisms. Enhancement Prisms are required for forging Masterwork gear again, obtained from challenging activities, again, like we talked about Grandmaster Nightfalls, things like that, are purchasable from the Crypt Arc. One of the cores for the system also is Legendary Shards. Legendary Shards will be going away shortly, so if you do have Legendary Shards in the game, I would go ahead and spend those because by the time the next expansion comes out, Legendary Shards will be exiting. Next up is XP. So XP has changed quite a bit in how you obtain XP within the game. The primary way to get XP now is doing your seasonal challenges. Seasonal challenges are tied to seasonal activities and the core activities within the game. If you do these, you're going to get the absolute most XP, anywhere from 25,000 to 100,000 XP, depending on which level they are. The other thing you can do is bounties. Bounties, again, it depends on what you're doing. They're XP plus plus bounties. These are 12,000 XP each. Those are limited to certain weekly activities you can do every week on each of your characters. And there are, also we there are also weekly challenges that are the yellow icons that show up on the different planets. Speaking of bounties, bounties have changed quite a bit in Destiny 2. Again, as I talked about earlier, you have XP++, but you also have XP+, and just XP bounties. Your XP++, again, are your weeklies. Your XP+, are daily bounties. They rotate every day. And then your XP bounties, which again, go from 12,000 to 6,000 to 3,000, your XP ones are your repeatable bounties. And the great thing about the repeatable bounties is you can keep getting them as long as you have enough glimmer to do that. And they also give you bright dust, but they also give you the worst amount of XP. So again, bounties have changed a little bit. They've kind of simplified, but just pay attention to XP++, XP+, and XP to understand which ones will give you the right rewards. Destiny 2 has implemented a season pass model similar to what Fortnite does. The season pass goes up to rank 100, and if you get the season pass, you actually immediately get access to the exotic for the season, because there's always one, plus you get additional materials. There is a free pass that you can level at the same time, but with the season pass, you basically get the free and the season pass upgrades at the same time. So it depends if it's value to you. One of the primary benefits of the artifact is that in the past you used to get artifact mods, which you could put on your weapon and armor to be able to do things within the game and have special abilities. Now those are just intrinsic perks. So as soon as you have them, you have them. So for instance, if you're trying to get Unstoppable, and Unstoppable is on a hand cannon this season, once you unlock it, you just have it. Now the one thing that limits you is that you are limited to so many slots that you can have active at one time. You can reset your artifact if you decide to do something different for build, but you do need to keep that in mind. And again, to get to those upper level perks, you're obviously going to have to get XP, which you can get through playing activities, doing bounties or other things like that. So leveling has been simplified too. In the leveling system, you have what's called the soft cap, the hard cap and the pinnacle cap. For the soft cap, this is what you get to the level of by playing the game. So in other words, if you get in the game and you just play the game, don't do anything special, don't do special activities, you're going to continuously get upgrades of like purple items that will eventually get you to that soft cap. And typically, most of the general activities in the game, if they are powered level enabled, are centered around that soft cap so most players can play it. Once you get past that, then there's the hard cap. The hard cap is what you do by doing the activities that show powerful rewards, again, within the director. Doing those activities will slowly give you one power level at a time upgrades until you reach your pinnacle cap. At the pinnacle cap, the only way you can raise up your level, which is another 10 levels, is by playing pinnacle activities. These are typically raids, 
100k nightfall again you'll look in there if something says powerful that's get to the hard cap some says pinnacle that's get the pinnacle cap and then once you get the pinnacle cap you're capped out champions champions are new types of yellow bars that present challenges again in more upper tier activities and sometimes even lower tier there are three types of primary champions the first is barrier a barrier champion once you whittle it down to about third first third of its health it's going to raise a shield that you can't shoot through if you don't stun it it will actually regenerate its health which is kind of annoying to get the perks to be able to deal with champions you're obviously going to have to get those off your seasonal artifact right so and that will vary every season the other thing is certain exotics have intrinsic perks that will allow you to do the stunning you need on the different champions and to do that you, you shoot it over time to the point where you see its bar when the bear, when the shield is up go down to zero you'll see it's stunned while it's stunned it takes additional damage you also have unstoppables unstoppables are probably not as intimidating as some of the other ones unstoppable the one thing is they're unstoppable right they will hard charge at you but once you stun them you can quickly take them down the other thing is they don't regenerate health which is really good so if nothing else if there's hard charging you can go hide wait and then take them out later if you need to finally you have overload champions which are the most annoying champions in the game they're annoying for a couple reasons so to stun them if you stun them then obviously they're stunned for a period of time and then you can start taking them out if you stun them though and then let them you know you don't shoot them and you don't stun them again they're immediately going to start regenerating health one of the other things bungie did with most pv activities to keep it streamlined is they've adapted levels and this is primarily centered around nightfalls but it extends to other activities in the game those levels are adept hero legend master and for nightfall specifically grandmaster the big difference in those is that sometimes those activities are power cap, depending on which one you're doing. The other thing is, once they get to a certain level, they start adding champions. And sometimes they'll add more champions. They'll also add modifiers. The primary advantage of this is that across all the different PvE activities that utilize this, you at least understand the, the type of activity and the level you're going to need to go into it, right? The other thing is, as you get up in, at the different activities and you get higher, you get better rewards. So if you're looking for certain materials in the game, that's the way to do it. The pinnacle of this is a Grandmaster, the Grandmaster Nightfall. In the Grandmaster Nightfall, obviously, you have more challenges and you have more buffs and debuffs put on you to make it more difficult. You're also capped at your power. So in other words, it takes you 25 levels below the pinnacle cap. So no matter what you're doing, no matter how well you level up, you're, you're yeah, stuck at that level, which makes it a very challenging activity. Finishers. Finishers are act things they've added within the game that sometimes can allow you to take some power some powerful enemies down pretty quickly. What it is 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 that as you're shooting an enemy, when you get to probably a slither help, maybe a third, you'll see a yellow dot appear above its head. When you see that, you can perform a finisher move, and these are actually purchasable. They're different types of ones that you can use. The primary benefit of this is that again, and you use you use whatever again depending on if you're PC or PlayStation, different buttons for this but you'll do an animation and instantly kill the enemy that you're with the and that again that can help if you're close doing something close up and you want to take it out really quickly the other thing you could do is those finishers actually can tie back in two different mods and builds that you can use so again it, it has a lot of utility lost sectors lost sectors have always been in destiny 2 but what they've done more recently is they've done legend and master lost sector so again just like i talked about in the pve section earlier these are power capped activities and if you do them solo you actually get a chance at obtaining exclusive exotic armor and some of it's some of the most powerful exotic armor in the game you have to do it solo and again one of the things that's nice about it is while it can be a little bit of a grind it's a guaranteed grind if you do it enough you're going to get those drops where other exotic armor it may take you randomly or waiting for Zer to get it every week so strikes have always been a part of destiny 2 and again it they're, they're still in the game some of the changes are obviously you have your main vanguard strikes and these are not power capped or anything so this is just for you know going in maybe getting some kills doing bounties things like that you also have nightfall and they've standardized nightfall which again they have adept hero legend master and grandmaster and again some of those give you power pinnacle rewards and give you additional materials that are and exotics that can drop out as rewards so again they also have champions added again depending on what level you are so nightfalls and strikes especially nightfalls 
are probably some of the most repeatable ways to get high-end gear and high-stat gear, as well as exotics in the game. So Gambit, if you haven't played Gambit before, Gambit is a combo PvP and PV activity. In the PV activity, you're going around killing things and getting moats, which you deposit in the bank. That bank allows you to send blockers to the other side, which can block their bank. And over time, it can actually drain the moats that they've deposited. You're both racing to get to 100 moats, and when you do that, a boss shows up. When the boss shows up, you have to go to different areas within the map, and you'll have these primevals show up. Killing those primevals will continue to increase a, a buff that will allow you to increase damage to the boss. Now, all this would be simple, except there's a PvP component. You can invade, which allows you to go to the other side and kill enemies. When you kill enemies, you can drop their moats, and during the primeval phase, the boss phase, you can actually heal the primeval by killing people. So again, there's a lot of balance between the PvE portion and when you invade, and there's some strategy mechanics. Gambit, some people don't like it. I actually think it's a fun mode. For those who've played Gambit in the past, what they did is they basically took Gambit Prime away, and they kind of took the best of Gambit Prime and combined it with the best of normal Gambit, and that's the Gambit mode we have today. So PvP has changed a, quite a bit in Destiny. So originally PvP was a four, play, four and four player match. Now you have modes that are six on six. Those are your general, not power level enabled, just going in and having fun modes. You have three on three modes, which a lot of those are based around the co competitive playlist. In the competitive playlist, that's a ranked playlist where you level up and you use skill-based matchmaking to determine who you're gonna play against. And there are titles and rewards around that, so that's why some people may get into that. The ultimate version of that is Trials of Osiris, which is a reboot of Trials from Destiny 1. And this, again, it comes basically every week, and it's an end game sort of mode for PvP, where again, you can get access to really high end rewards as far as, well, first off, they have cosmetics, armor, things like that, but also certain weapons that you can only get only within trials there's also iron banner that's typically run twice a season and iron banner is again there's a title involved with it you can get special gear that looks kind of cool there's special guns sometimes but it's also it's also surrounded around some of the same competitive modes and the other big change that happened is they have changed it from being power enabled so anyone can get in there you don't have to worry about power level dungeons or end game pve activities that are, are surrounded versus raids where it's six people it's three people and you can even solo them right it's a little more difficult but you can and there's some achievements around that but there are three player activities that's a little easier to get a fire team together to play typically they have a few bosses one at the end somewhere in the middle they have a jumping puzzle they'll have a couple puzzles um, within them and the pattern right now is they're doing two of those a year so again there's a ton of great dungeons within the game check them out again they also have exclusive weapons and some of those are some of the best weapons in the game so if you're into pv activities if you haven't gotten yourself ready for raid and you want to try something out that's maybe a little simpler kind of between a raid and like strikes this would be a good activity for you to try they're a lot of fun obviously raids raids are some of the most important and critical things within destiny 2 they're the end game pv content and so for Destiny 2, they are slowly bringing back and reprising raids from Destiny 1. So they've done Vault of Glass, they've done King's Fall, they'll probably do Wrath of Machine at some point. There are some raids that have been taken out like Leviathan and Scourge of the Past, but there have been raids that have been added. So again, raids are about, if you haven't played them before, raids are about mechanics. In other words, puzzles, things like that. You typically a jumping puzzle. And also figure out how to do the best boss DPS because there's typically multiple bosses within a raid activity. These are not these are activities that you need to find a fire team. You need to be on mic, and you're gonna they require six people. You can do it with less. There are people have done that, but obviously that's more difficult. One of the other advantages of raids is that they usually have an exotic that's usually one of the best exotics out of that season, and usually it'll get nerfed at some point. So you want to get in and get as quickly as possible. Armor mods have been simplified quite a bit. You, if you, depending on when you've come in, obviously armor mods at one point didn't exist in the game. Then they put them in, and there were things like Charge of Light and Warmind mods, all sorts of different mods. It's been basically stripped down into a very basic system. Most of the mods are going to be set to specific armor pieces. So, for instance, your arms will have one type of mods, where your legs will have different ones. 
it's pretty universal. You don't go and collect mods from vendors or anything anymore. It's pretty universal. The only thing that makes a difference every season is that every season there are perks that are intrinsic that are locked through the artifact. Now, why that does simplify the build system, and some people say it actually neuters it, it does make it at least a little bit easier for new players to understand. Crafting was a new system that was introduced with Witch Queen. One of the things about crafting is that crafting actually allows you to go in and what it says, craft weapons. And you can craft them with a certain set of perks. And the weapon that you craft, you can get upper level perks by using the weapon or using materials to level it up. So you can end up getting the upper level mods, including enhanced mods that happen on the weapon. The other piece of crafting is that you can reshape a weapon. Reshaping a weapon is essentially just going in and taking an existing weapon and changing out the perks. And this is one of the things that's nice because it allows you to take a weapon that you've used for the most part and leveled up and allows you to change it for different scenarios. It obviously uses materials to do that. Rahul actually has an exchange. So depending on when you left Destiny, this is varied from different areas and where it was located. It's all now in Rahul. So basically you can take one particular type of material and trade it for a different type at, of course, whatever exchange rate is currently in the system. Exotic focusing is a nice new section of Destiny 2, and what it basically allows you to do is to go into the game and focus specific exotics. Now you can do this by expansion, and it takes a little bit less material, or you can get specific to exotics that you already own. And the reason you would wanna do this, and again, that costs more materials, the reason you would wanna do this is to get a particular exotic that has better stats than one that you have currently. So one of the things that's changed is that they have primarily gone to a much more simplified way than how your skill tree works for your subclasses. Now everyone has aspects and fragments. Aspects are your primary things on your, on your character that differentiate that class from every other class in the game. And again, they're gonna change depending on whether you're on solar or arc or void. Your fragments are, you have a ton of those, and because of that, you can customize them. You only have so many points for these, and again, they're based on the type of aspects that you put in. But these fragments can really make a big difference in how your build crafting works. So get these unlocked because these are real difference makers in the game. The other thing, as, as we talk about it, there's also stasis that was added to the game. And stasis is originally where this aspects and fragments type of method came up. Stasis is a new element that freezes people. And again, there's some really overpowered builds for that as well. So again, aspects and fragments now have a simplified, streamlined way to look at how each of your subclasses are unique and how you can customize them to your needs. And that's the video, guys. Again, I just want to give you some quick tips, quick updates on things that have changed between Destiny 1, potentially, and Destiny 2, or different years of Destiny 2. Hopefully this was useful for you, and if it was, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and jump into my Discord and we can talk about it further. And again, if you're not clear on some of this, feel free to check all of my playlists where I go over guides for new returning players and at different varying levels of experience in the game. And I'll see you guys in the tower.